Hello, this is Mr. Stansberry. I'm going to take you through the notes on graphs of inverse functions. At the end of this, you should be able to say, I can use composition of functions to determine if functions are inverses of each other, and I can graph inverse functions and identify the symmetry. All right, so let's start off. If two functions are inverses of each other, f and f prime, we'll call them, then the composition of functions f times um, f of f prime of x should equal x, and also f prime of f of x should also equal x. Okay? So, basically what we're saying here is we've got to take the g of, if we're doing this first one here first, we're going to take the g of x here and plug it into this uh, g of x, sorry, g prime of x, plug it into the g of x machine and see if x comes out. Okay? So, let's let's try that one out. So, again, if we're doing this one, First, we take f prime of x and plug it into the f machine. So, in this case, g prime of x. So, into the top here is going to go one of these two functions. Again, if we're following this, it's going to be x plus 2 over 3. That's going to go in to this other machine here, which is 3x minus 2. So, this x plus 2 over 3 goes in for this x right here. So we go 3 times x plus 2 over 3 minus 2, right? And then this 3 times x plus 2 over 3, guess what? These 3's um, reduce down to 1, so we really get x plus 2 minus 2. And so then guess what we get when we take x plus 2 minus 2? We get x comes out. So half of it we've done this part we've proven that this part is true so we also have to prove that this part is also true so now that means we're going to take the g of x and plug it into the g prime of x machine so we do the same thing but just do the opposite order here so we're going to take g of x which is 3x minus 2 and that's going to go in and replace all the x's in x plus 2 over 3 right so this is going to replace this x right here so we end up getting um, 3x minus 2 plus 2 over 3, right? So nothing to distribute here. So 3x minus 2 plus 2, this plus 2 and minus 2 cancel out. I'll turn into 0. So we end up with 3x over 3, the 3's go through together and turn themselves into one and guess what x comes back out so since both of those things work to get x back out we have now proven that they are indeed inverse functions okay if we were to go through this and get anything except for x out of either one of these then it they're not inverse functions as long as we did our math right okay so let's uh let's try Let's try some more of these. So are these two inverse functions? Okay, so again, we're just going to plug one into the other and the other, we'll just plug one, each one into the other function and see if we get x out of it. Okay, as soon as we plug it in and we find that we don't get x out of it, then we can stop. But let's see if that happens here. So it doesn't matter which one goes first, so let's just do this. Let's take our negative x minus 7 over 2. And we're going to plug that into this one here, negative 2x plus 7. So this whole thing turns into the x. So we got negative 2. Wherever we see x, it's now negative x minus 7 over 2 plus 7. And then we just got to simplify this and see what happens. So the negative, the 2 and the 2 reduce down to 1, but we still have this negative. So we got a negative times x, negative times 7, right? So Negative times negative x is positive x. Negative times negative 7 is positive 7, right? And then plus 7. So we go through and we simplify that. x plus 7 plus 7 is x plus 14. This does not equal x. So uh, they are not inverse functions of each other, okay? As soon as we find about 1 for sure, then we can stop. Um, 
Now, had this been a positive 7 instead of a negative 7, that would have turned into negative 7 plus 7, and then we would have, and it, then it might have worked. But again, as soon as you know you did your math right and you don't get x, not an inverse function. Okay? All right, one last set of things to do here. Find the inverse of each function, graph it, and, uh, and the line of symmetry. Sounds, sounds rough, but it's really not too bad. But before we do that, let's do a quick little comedy break. This is one of my favorites. Oh my gosh, that squirrel had to be so dizzy. Whew. Anyway, find the inverse of each function, graph the function, its inverse, and the line of symmetry. So let's just do one thing at a time. Let's um, find the inverse, right? So remember, the inverse is where we switch the x and the y. So remember, this over here is the y. So now that turns into x equals 2y minus 6, right? So to solve for y, we add 6 to both sides. Oops x plus 6 equals 2y, divide both sides by 2, and we get y equals, let's do this, this is 1x plus 6 over 2, so 1 over 2, that's 1 half x, right, because 1x over 2 is the same as 1 half x, 6 divided by 2 is 3, so there's our inverse function, so officially if we're going to write this the correct way, 1 half x plus 3, that is our, if this is t of x, this is t to the negative first of x, right? There's our inverse function, okay? Now, it says we want to graph the function, its inverse, and the line of symmetry. So let's do this. Let's do the inverse, which is what we just found in blue. So plus 3. Um, and then we've got up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, right? So that gives us enough to kind of get us a good line. So try to make your line as best you can right through the middle there. And then let's see, let's do the regular function here in orange. So that's the original. So we do minus 6 is the first point, and then we go up 2 over 1, right? So up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and now we make, we draw this line here. And again, you just kind of, kind of got to guess and hope for the best that you get, you're getting through all those points. Um, that's pretty close-ish. It's a little far down. Let me try that again. I'd like to, these to look a little nicer so that it makes more sense. There we go. That looks better. Okay, <clears throat> now, we graph the function, we graph the inverse, and now we're going to graph the line of symmetry. Okay, so let's do that maybe in, we'll do that in purple. How about that? Line of symmetry. So it's basically, what line does this get reflected across? And hopefully you can see that it's going to be right down the middle here. That purple one is the line of symmetry, otherwise known as the LOS. You'll sometimes hear that called. Okay, so that means you could really, what you could do is you could take the function, the regular function 2x minus 6, which is the orange one here, and you could just reflect every point across this orange, sorry, across the purple line and come up with your inverse function, right? So if you like reflect that straight across, you get this here. Reflect this one straight across, you get that. Reflect that straight across, you get this. So forth and so on, okay? And then here's the part that I, I don't know, I find this a little bit interesting here. This, the equation of this line, if you think about it, it's y equals something x plus or minus the b, which is the y-intercept. Right now the y-intercept is zero, right? And then the slope of this line is up one over one, up one over one, so it's really just one x plus zero which is y equals x, is this line here, okay, that reflection line. Now, again, here's the interesting part. I, it took me a long time to realize this, but <clears throat> when I was first, when I remember first doing this, 
is what do we do when we end up finding trying to find the uh, the inverse of each function? We take all the y's and turn them into x's, and we turn all the x's into y's because the y equals the x. Okay, that kind of blew my mind once I really kind of realized that. So um, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. But uh, if not, it will eventually. Okay, so we'll we'll try some more and see what happens. All right, last one here. Negative one third x minus three. So maybe let's even let's just graph this one first right off the bat. Plus three. And then it's negative one over three. So down one over three. Down one over three. And so forth and so on. So <clears throat> we go to graph that. And we get something like that ish. Alright, and then now we're gonna do the inverse. So this is gonna be x equals negative one third y plus three subtract three from both sides x minus three equals negative one third y so really we're going to want to divide both sides by negative one third or probably the easier way to do that is to actually multiply by negative three the whole thing right because if we multiply negative one-third times negative three, that's going to give us plain old y, right? So negative three times x is negative three x. Negative three times negative three is plus nine. Okay, so let's graph this thing and see what we get. So we're starting up here at plus nine. And then we got to go down three over one. Down three more over one and so forth and so on, right? So when we go to graph this thing here, we get roughly that. And then if we draw our line of symmetry, which we know is going to have to be y equals x, that should split right through the middle, and it looks like it does. So I'm feeling pretty good about our, um, about our answer there. There's our inverse function. Again, if we were to write the correct notation, it would be r to the negative first of x equals negative 3x plus 9. That's the inverse function. Okay? Okay. Uh, that's all we have for the uh, 6-2 notes. If you have any further questions, please feel free to ask. Thanks.